it did uh, give us some respite in September because uh, that was the time, August, September was the time when the prices were on a free fall. Uh, in fact, it's reflected in the fact that when we asked for the safeguard duty, the steel prices were $340 for auto coils and it ended up around $260, $270. So uh, it gave us some respite, it slowed down the fall, it broke the uh, uh, deluge of imports which was happening. Okay. So it gave us some breathing space, but uh, uh, more than that was countered by the drop in steel prices. I think uh, if you go back to the prices which it was at least December last year, December 2014 or so, I think that's a price which is sustainable for the industry. We think that we should have a double digit growth. Double digit growth? Yeah. But I don't want to mention the figure at this particular juncture because, you know, we have to see this quarter has just begun and we have to see that how things are going on. We are quite optimistic about the budget also because the government would bring in a lot of stops to see that how infrastructure sector takes off. The other opportunity in the infrastructure sector has been the acquisitions because many of the companies and projects have not been doing well. Yes. And that is where we see that companies like us can, can play a huge role in that and also large overseas investors mm -hmm. and uh, people who are in those particular sectors can also invest in India. So what kind of acquisition opportunities are you currently looking at? Looking because at almost everything's on the block, ports, roads, uh, you know, uh, all kinds of large infrastructure projects, power plants. What is it that so, you are looking at? So we are looking at power and roads specifically because telecom tower we have just disinvested from the telecom tower but uh, roads and power, industrial parks, these are three areas which we think that it will pick up and especially from the acquisition perspective because we have about a couple of companies in mm -hmm. these sectors and uh, they would look at those particular growth opportunities. What we also see is that uh, in the railways specifically the government is saying that they would be getting the private sector to invest so the railway should pick up water is another area which we think that should pick up it water. may take yeah water. so when you say acquisition are you looking at participating in some of the deals yourselves or financing some of the companies that may be acquirers what will your role at Shrey Infrastructure Finance be in, in this consolidation? Both, because we are a financial institution uh, specifically sure. and then we also make investments in the infrastructure sector. So we have made investments in Vyom in the telecom tower business. Right. We made investments in roads, powers and all. So therefore, we are looking at both financing and uh, wherever there is a problem, what we think that we can do very well is to restructure that particular company provide them some financing uh, whatever is required and also take equity stake and because we have operational... So what's on your shopping list Mr. Kanoria and what's the budget looking like? How much money are you looking to spend on this uh, on this acqu acquisition strategy? See, unfortunately being a listed company we can't specifically mention about the Ball amount. Ballpark figures will do for our viewers back in India. As you see that you know last quarter we had two announcements in October we announced the Vyom disinvestment Correct. and people were thinking about it for the last couple of years that when is it going to happen or actually it is going to happen or not. But and then in December you did the BNP uh, Paribas restructuring. restructuring. So Correct. therefore I think that both these two so what we are trying to see is because... But you are not answering my question. How much are you looking to spend on these acquisitions? No, I think that, uh, you know, the money which we are going to get from Vyom, we will be doing uh, financing of that and uh, that will... At present, we are not looking at very many greenfield projects to finance. We are looking at brownfield projects or projects which are stuck up because that we feel can see the light of the day much faster than going in for a greenfield project in the country. So that is what we will be concentrating on. The other area which we think is uh, a huge opportunity in India is we had an investment in Sahaj, which mm -hmm. is in the rural yes. IT and yes. we provide about services to e-governance, e-commerce and e You have about 11 crore rupees invested in that business. No, if I have, understand it. That's the equity but we have a huge investment in that company by way of debt and uh, uh, what we see is that there's about 300 million people who are provide services okay. to the 28,000 centers that we run in the rural area. So we are now expanding that. Okay. And that is another area of infrastructure which we feel will do very well. This is a combination, it's almost like a hybrid model, which is uh, physical infrastructure which we have created and the I on the IT platform. Okay. So, so you're looking to bring in a strategic partner here? Maybe. Maybe. So, yeah. Okay, so on the one hand you're looking to acquire assets distressed assets in power, in railways, in water, uh, in roads. Yeah. And on the other hand, you're looking at bringing in a strategic player, let's say, in the East Hedge business, as you pointed out. Maybe East Hedge, maybe in the road also, because you see, what we are looking as a financial institution, our business model is very simple, that we do financing of infrastructure projects, plus wherever there is an opportunity, we would invest. And when we invest in certain companies, we will either fully divest or 
we will dilute our equity because ultimately what we are trying to do is create value for our shareholders okay. and we are a financial institution so in multiple ways we can create value for the shareholders Got that. and because you know now we are in this sector for 26 years so we have seen the ups and downs in the infrastructure space okay. and that gives us a good knowledge in the year at the moment we don't see demand very different from what it has been in 2015 you have to decipher whether that is good or bad uh, Consumer demand has varied across the country. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the south has naturally been affected, especially in the last quarter because of the Chennai. heavy rains in Chennai and uh, rains also in Karnataka, Kerala, coastal Andhra, etc. But uh, the north, east have been good. India is like all of Europe; you'll always have some bad spots, some good spots. So it sort of evens out. Um, you can say we are cautiously optimistic. Or so to speak, <laughs> whatever that means. <laughs> <laughs> if I remember correctly, that's what you told me last year as well. So. so the year hasn't been very different. It's been good from the margin point of view, frankly, because uh, raw material and commodity prices have fallen considerably, yeah. more than we anticipated. Uh, we hope that trend continues. But uh, in terms of overall demand growth, uh, plus minus 1% here, there, between last year and this year, is not very drastically different. We are continuing to do quite well, yes. so we are growing well. Our bottom line growth is much higher than our top, top line, line growth, growth yes, because too. of the commodity cycle helping us very considerably. Right. Top line growth is muted for several reasons. One is there is no inflation. In fact, there yes. is deflation. So our volume growths are high, but, but value, value growths growth are not as yeah. high. And uh, generally, even in our international markets, we are doing quite well. Okay. So our group is doing well. But because of the general uh, situation, we wonder when we can do very well. Okay. Is 2017 going to be pretty much the same like 2016? So I mean the fiscal year 17? Or do you think that it could in fact show dramatic improvement? Well, for India, I think a lot depends on whether we are able to get the GSK through. <laughs> yes, of course. Because that will take us to double-digit growth. Yeah. So that will change the sentiment in the country. That will actually uh, get the economy moving very rapidly. So I do hope something is done on that. I hope uh, people, the politicians cooperate, put economics before politics, and that could change the picture entirely. So 2017, to my mind, will not be much better than 2016 unless GST is through.